Welcome back to the D2 Nation podcast, ladies and gentlemen. You'll notice that there is no one else joining us this evening, and uh, it's going to be a fun little show with just myself and my awesome co-host, Bethany Bowman. Bethany, welcome back. Thanks, and I totally expect the viewership to be down this episode because no one likes to listen to you or I, Wayne. They're all about the guests, but you know, with the bracket coming out for the Division II football championship. We're going to break it down a little bit, give our guests some time to prep for the next upcoming weeks and get ready for that. So let's get right into it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely interesting. There were definitely a few teams that caused a bit of um, a ruckus on Twitter, if you would. Uh, a lot of, of a lot of, um, there was people not happy with me and D2 football, apparently, for not letting their teams into the bracket as if we have that power, which I wish I did. Trust me, I did. But, um, you know, there definitely were some some question marks. We could go through it region by region and, and talk about, about like some of the surprises and, and some of the things as we go through that. But um, I think, you know, when you've been doing this as long as I have and when you've been around it as long as you have, you learn to celebrate the teams that make it there. Right. And that's what we're doing here. We're not here to really talk badly about the selection committee or, or talk badly about the teams that didn't make it, but just really focus on the teams that did and, and what's going to happen over the next few weeks. Yeah. And, you know, that's the interesting thing, too, especially about this playoff format. You know, people complain about Division One and FBS and, and how they do it. And I don't think that they ever truly have gotten the best four teams. I don't think that <laughs> Division Two format gets, you know, the best teams with as many as we put in nobody really knows that's the thing that's you know I wish that we could do a 100 team bracket and have everybody play everybody but even then on any given day teams are totally different and how they play and with injuries so is anything ever really 100% accurate do teams sometimes get the short end of the stick do teams that maybe don't belong get in yes absolutely and I don't think that we're trying to say that that doesn't happen but unfortunately, I don't think there's a real way to to get it exactly perfect. And so we've got to enjoy the madness, how it is. And like you said, celebrate those teams that do get it. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And, um, you know, um, a couple of cool things, you know, we, we talk about like the other teams that get in there, but then you do have the Northwest Missouri State, you know, sneaking in. Uh, they definitely needed some help, unfortunately. Sorry, Bethany, it was, it was beating your team that that helped. That and that's really what got them in there was beating Emporia State. But that's you know that's their 18th trip in a row. Like that that's remarkable to make it to this. We're we're talking about teams that are that complain about getting snubbed and don't get the opportunity. This is a team that makes that finds a way to to, to find themselves in there every year. And that's 10 more times than the next closest team, which is Ferris State, which has been on this remarkable run the whole time. Uh, and, you know, we, we got a lot of newbies and and, and I think it's going to be um, between the newbies and a lot of teams back for the first time in a long time. And then you clump in those old faithfuls that just don't ever go away. I think we, we've got a nice mix to make an exciting one. So if you want, why don't we get started with Super Region 1? Yeah, absolutely. We'll start with Super Region 1 and number one seed, Indiana, Pennsylvania, gets the uh, the bye for week one. So uh, are they the sure favorite here in this region? I mean, I don't. Can anyone be the sure favorite with, um, you know, Tyson Bajan playing football in November and December? We saw it last year. The guy, uh, we had him on the show and not to call him out, but we remember that he uh was so excited after his Hail Mary that we had him on that he told the story about he ran in the locker room and threw up in the garbage can. That's how excited he was. And that, and this is that time of year. And and I really do think, um, I think Shepard is the team to beat here, to be perfectly honest with you. And and one of the main reasons why is because if they do play um, IUP again, Indiana, again, PSAC teams playing each other twice in the same season don't have a good history of getting that sweep. Um, it's really tough for two teams to beat each other twice in the same season, especially in the Peace Act. Um, so I, I, I think I'm not taking a single thing away from IUP. They're a really, really good team. Um, but I, 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 I just have this sense that Shepard's still the team to beat here. I mean, they lost by three points. So otherwise, he'd be 11 and 0 on a first round bye. You know, um, uh, th there's all these games are good. You know, Slippery Rock seems like they're only we're talking about teams that never go away, right? Slippery Rock never goes away. They're in there every year. Uh, Notre Dame, Ohio, they're there every year, you know, and, and they really had to prove it. They really had to work their way back this year. Usually they just kick butt and get in there. 
New Haven was in it last year. Assumption's a nice little return. It's been a few years for them. And same with Ashland. And I think that Ashland and Notre Dame game is really interesting in the first round. That's the game I'm watching because it's a rematch of the first game of the season when nobody knew where really who Ashland was. They were a sleeper. They were good. But they came out and they pretty much smoked Notre Dame, you know, and, and Notre Dame was short a little bit on personnel with injury. And that's totally, uh, you know, you can't fault them for that. But Ashland controlled that game and it set the tone for this like breakout season that kind of took everyone by surprise. And I just said, it's hard to beat someone twice in the same season that, you know, is Notre Dame, Notre Dame clearly remembers that loss, right? So it, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a first round matchup. Um, what do you think? You, you, are, you, are you putting your eggs in the Tyson Bajan basket? No, I always like to go with, uh, you know, guys that we've got to talk to personally because I, I just feel more connected with them. Obviously, you know how they're thinking a little bit, and uh, we've seen the player that he is. But I think you're right. You can't discredit IUP. They've earned the number one seed for a region. So I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, I don't I don't want to make a true prediction. We did that last year with the D2 no, we were guys. we terrible. And it did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> Probably um, – I'll just I'll go with one of those two. But who is your sleeper team out of this region? I think I think it has to be Ashland, just because they do have that scoring defense. You know, they, they, it's top ten in in D two football. It's not just like they dominated their conference or dominated a part of the region. This was like one of the best scoring defenses in the in the entire D two. Um, and you know, I think they could shut down Notre Dame's offense. Uh, can they shut down IUP? I don't know. But if, you, if you're looking for the sneaky upset, it may come there. Uh, I don't know that it will. But if, you know, if you're looking for it, um, here's the thing about upsets. I was looking at it and traditionally speaking, and it never means anything because that, like you said last year, we followed the, the history. We made our predictions and we got burned. Traditionally speaking, the vast majority of upsets come in Super Region 2 and Super Region 4. And so like you said, IUP is dangerous. They earned the number one seed for a reason. The number one seed usually prevails in Super Region One. They, that's to their advantage, you know. So, um, but I do. Th I think this Ashland team, especially if they're really healthy, they've been missing a few pieces the last few weeks. If they can get them back for this week, uh, and especially next week if they win, um, I think that they're a good sleeper. Um, but I mean, is, is Shepard a sleeper at number two? They're not really, right? But uh, yeah, I would. I I, I think um, Ashland is a good team to watch. Um, I think and Notre Dame, like I said, just because of the intrigue in that first game. But um, yeah, if if I had to make a pick to come out of this part of the bracket, I'm going number two, Shepard. Yeah, I, I think a sleeper. You, it's got to be like a four seed or below. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my criteria for it at least. So yeah, <laughs> Shepard's not in that. But we'll move on to Super Region Two now, Wayne. And so scrolling down here we're gonna look at number one seed benedict and number four seed virginia union we just had coach on a nice guest for the d2 nation really good yeah. team in this region here west florida limestone fayetteville state delta state winget man i don't know what do you think well obviously you know this is where a lot of the controversy came in because newberry wound up winning the south atlantic conference but didn't get into the tournament and um, it caused a big stir because they did win the conference championship, but winning the conference championship game is not part of the criteria to get in the tournament. It, it's definitely, and and it. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have let them in. I, quite honestly, I did think they were going to be, I thought winning that game would get them to sneak in, um, but it, it it isn't a criteria. I thought there were other reasons that they deserved to get in, um, but I don't think it, it had anything to do with winning the conference championship. So um Wingate actually probably has a pretty big target on their back because that's the team that got in over them. So, you know, there, there's a lot there. And, you know, another team that's pretty familiar in this part of the region uh, and this part of the bracket is West Georgia, and they're not there either, right? So the funny thing here is West Florida is the only team here that was there last year. We're talking about not – they're not all first-timers, but they – not these have not been around in a while and as we when we had limestone on we know this is their first time right this is the big story as is benedict so you asked about number one benedict what do we know about benedict nothing and that's the beauty of it right you rarely have a team make their debut as an 11 and 0 team conference champions and the number one seed 
Like that's crazy to me that you're the you're making your tournament debut and you're the number one seed in it in the in the super region that has sent West Florida and Valdosta State to the championship game five years in a row, right? Like it's crazy to me that that's the team that's number one. So they're obviously the team to watch here. Um, as you mentioned, Virginia Union. We had Jada Byers on last week. He's leading all of college football in rushing. Uh, that's the kind of player that can make things happen in the postseason. Um, Delta State really uh, came out of nowhere this year, was super impressive. The thing was so strong on the road, and now they're hosting a game, and that's where they found they had their only loss. So that that's an intriguing ma- matchup. But I really do think this this part of the bracket comes down to West Florida. And as much as we love the limestone story, and I do, I think it's a great story what Mike Furry's done there. I thought Trey Stewart had a remarkable season and the turnaround. But we talked. I, I mentioned it. This experience that West Florida brings here, it, it, this time of year, it's invaluable. So like. These limestone kids, as cool, calm, and collected as Coach Furry was, right? Once those kids step on that field and see the big lights and realize they're playing, you're a little starry-eyed at first, right? You're kind of like, whoa, here we go. Whereas West Florida is like, all right, we've been here before, you know? So I, I do think West Florida, because of that experience, is the team to beat in this part of the bracket. Sure. Well, that makes me feel better. You know, I don't cover D2 every day like you do but when you say what do we know about this team nothing because these teams are also new it makes me feel better that the uh, dean of D2 even has some question marks <laughs> for it yeah no I mean they're good they're a really fast team they're a really athletic team and they're very you know we've talked about this a hundred times especially when we had Grand Valley State on you know the thing that I like most about Grand Valley State when we get to them is that there's no Kate Peterson's great. Tariq Reed is great, but there's no superstar, right? There's no that one guy because there's so many of that guy, right? And that's what Benedict has. You're not going to find the uh, Harlan Hill candidate on there. You're not going to find a team that has 10 All-Americans because they have so many guys that are doing the right thing right now. The question is, is how do they want match up out of conference? Because they played some really tough teams in the, the in the CIA, in the SIAC. They have really really good teams there but how will they match up with these teams at out of conference uh on the big stage the, the big advantage is that they get the host of the out, right they'll be the home team and that's a huge advantage this time of year but um yeah i mean historically speaking we know nothing we we, we have nothing to gauge what's about to happen for this team this coach and, and i think that's great for me i if you've been seeing me on twitter that I, I i keep saying bring me chaos i love chaos and, and benedict being the number one seed is chaos and I love it for them. I love it for their program and I love for the game that we're going to get to watch. <laughs> you know, sure. Um, well, but yeah, if you're asking me who I think wins this part, it, it's West Florida. I don't know what you think though. I think that's a good point. Um, I mean, experience means a lot. And mm-hmm. I think that we're going to have a hard time moving on here to Super Region 3 because there's a lot of teams with experience. But we'll stick with two real quick so I can get your sleeper pick out of two. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, everyone's kind of a sleeper here because they're all, you know, Fayetteville State played themselves in by winning the CIA. They got, they snuck in under the wire. And, and I think that's kind of the thing. It's like Wingate and, and, and Fayetteville State are very good teams. I'm not taking anything away from them. And Limestone too. But but you had a lot of teams in this part of the bracket just get in, did, did the right things and had the right things fall to get in. Whereas I think the 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 dominant teams, I don't want to say dominant, but the seeded teams, the ranked teams in this part of the bracket are a little bit better and in a little bit of a bigger advantage being at home. Um, if there is a sleeper, um, I guess, and like I said, most of the upsets come out of Super Region too, so you got to be looking for it. So I guess if there's a sleeper, I would go with Fayetteville State because they are so the least likeliest team in these first round matchups to me to pull off a win against the Delta state team. So that would make them the intriguing sleeper because if they pull it off, Holy cow. It's like when West Florida went down, remember we had Newberry on the week after that they went down. Nobody saw that coming, right? Nobody saw that coming. The difference is for me, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit here, but the difference for me is Newberry was very, very good last year. But because they played in the South Atlanta Conference, everyone in the South Atlanta Conference knows Lenore Ryan, right? That's the team. They know Wingate. Newberry had two great defensive backs, and they made Austin Reed struggle, which nobody else in D2 really did. 
I don't know that Limestone has the weapons to do that. I don't know that Fayetteville State has the weapons to do that. But if you're asking me who the ultimate sleeper is, the biggest surprise to me that would come out of this first round would be Fayetteville State. Okay, I like it. Uh, I said four seed or below. So I'm going to go with Virginia Union because Jada Byers is really good. So Yeah, I like him too. <laughs> okay, so Super Region 3. And like I said, that's where we get probably the most experienced, the most familiar kind of names. And, you know, getting into the tournament, you have to earn it. But, you know, sometimes I think, like you said, Northwest Missouri State, they earned it. But 18 times, I mean, doing something like that, the name means something. Grand Valley State, obviously, a lot of postseason runs, that means something. Ferris State, they are the defending national champions. That means something. So you've got a really, you know, just a lot of notoriety here in this region. But number one, Grand Valley State. Number two, Ferris State. And then Pittsburgh State, out of the MIAA, like that. Uh, number three, and then you've got also in this region, UND, Northwest Missouri State, Wachita Baptist, Davenport. Pretty good region. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised. I thought Truman might make it because Davenport is very good, but I, I thought losing the Grand Valley State and Ferris State the last two weeks of the season may resonate in, in the recency bias of the of this election committee and maybe bump them and let Truman in. Uh, but it didn't do that. Davenport has a rematch. Bethany, you said you don't cover D2 football every day, but let me ask you a question. What do you think would be having to play Ferris State twice in three weeks? Oh, I would hate it. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. wouldn't like that at all. It's not a good matchup. I said it's hard to beat a team twice uh, in the same season. Um, Ferris State obviously beat Davenport very uh, handily the first time two weeks ago. And I just don't think Tony Anise is the kind of guy that is going to give up, you know, more than he went more than he has to. And I think he's ready for this game. Um, and, and unfortunately for Davenport, I think they got a really tough draw <laughs> in the team that they have to play. Um, you know, but that being said, every year, you know, we even before we started the show, you know, you, we, we've discussed it before. This has been the Ferris State part of the bracket, but it's not this year. It, it's Grand Valley State. They, they, this team has, we had them on, on the first week of the show. They've beaten ranked teams. They've beaten final four teams from last year. They beat Ferris State. It was 22-21. When you could win games like that against the defending champ, that says a lot. That that calls your guts in the question. That calls your moxie in the question. And they did it. And, I mean, they're they're probably too deep on special teams. That's how ridiculous this team is, right? They got... They have special team players that would maybe not be, you know, they would be starting on every other team that are probably on the bench on this team because they're that deep. Um, I just think this is, uh, it's weird to say that it's not Ferris State's uh, re part of the bracket this year. But if all goes planned, hopefully we do see that Ferris State and Grand Valley State rematch in the in the Super Region 3 finals. Um, but, you know, this is kind of your neighborhood. What do you think? Seeing Pittsburgh State here, um, you know, one time national champ, uh, uh, just not too long ago. I mean, it must be cool for you to see a couple teams in there going at it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the MIAA was kind of messy, like you said. Uh, Pittsburgh State finishes undefeated, so obviously, really deserves to be in. That's so tough to do in the MIAA. Um, Northwest Missouri State, like you said, had to be in Foria to get that berth, which, uh, again. You know, hats off to them. They they've earned it with 18 straight trips. That's awesome. Florida State is going to a bowl game, so I'll settle for that. But you know, the thing, and I don't, man. I hope, hope our my double A followers don't really watch this, but the my double A might they might be a little down this year. The my double A, and and I hate saying that because I think the standard for me is like those years that Northwest Missouri State won all those back to back titles. Nobody was touching that team. I don't care yeah. who it is like that. It was the defense, even the offense. It was just unbelievable. And so that's like, that's, that was kind of my first, like, oh my gosh, like this is how good the MIAA is. And so now, you know, watching some games and, you know, maybe it's because, you know, I'm just, I've been around it so long that my expectations are just getting high, but I just, I just don't think it's quite to that level this year. So um, I think, Pittsburgh State, Northwest Missouri, they have their work cut out for them to make a little run, um, which normally I would say the opposite. But I think you're right. I think Grand Valley State, I think Ferris State this year, probably, probably set for a rematch. I do think, and this is weird to say this, right? I do think Northwest is a sleeper here. I yeah. mean, they're not ranked. 
And what they, we've seen in the past, in the past, I think it's the two straight or, or two out of the last three, is I agree with you that the, the MIAA was weird this year, right? Like there, there was a lot of balance. There was no overpowering dominant offense, but the Bearcats defense was still the Bearcats defense, especially when they needed it most those last few games of the year, right? And their rush defense is number two in the in D2 in the nation so what we've seen in the past is you know Northwest Missouri State goes against Washita's rival Harding and they have those steamroller running offenses and they run into Northwest Missouri State and they can't go anywhere right and Washita is the same way they they have if they the Tigers if they get ahead of you with TJ Cole and Kendall Gibbons just running that crazy offense with the with their rushing game then they turn it over to the, those two running backs and you can't catch up to them. But if they fall behind, they're not the team that can make that comeback because they're so run heavy, right? And that's what Northwest has been so good at, especially Rich Wright as, the, as that defensive mastermind has been so good about, about taking out those run heavy um, uh, run heavy offenses. Am I saying Northwest is walking through and beating Washington? Washington Baptist is 11 and 0, right? They're the number four seed. That just says something about Super Region 3 when they're 11 and 0 and they're the number four seed, right? But I do think, you know, you've been asking me for a sleeper. Northwest Missouri State is probably team number seven in here, you know, like they're they're down there. They, I mean, they just got in because of the way the regional rankings looked. And um, so they, they would be my sleeper, even though. I guess technically they're number five, you know, even though it would be four versus five. I don't know how it works anymore since there's no numbers there. But uh, yeah, I think they're the sleeper. Um, I don't know about you, but that, that that's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah, I would pick Pittsburgh State as my sleeper, but there are three seats, so I, I can't really do that. But uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, I would agree with you on the Northwest Missouri State thing. And, and uh, I don't know. I mean, Pittsburgh State, supposed to make the second round as a three seed and if they could play a really complete game as a thing then maybe they'd have a chance with Ferris but again Ferris really good team Green Valley State and the Bulldogs I think are for the title but yeah. we'll move on to Super Region 4 here number one Angelo State number two Colorado School of Mines three Minnesota State and four Bemidji State Did I say that right Bemidji, Bemidji? Yeah. What, what is it yeah. Bemidji. Okay. Is that what you said? <laughs> Number four, Bemidji State. And then you've also got Winona State, CSU Pueblo, Wayne State. And who am I missing here? Uh, that... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there we are with Super Region th- or four. Excuse me. What do you think about uh, Number one, Angelo State? How good are they, Wayne? I think they're great. You know, I think um, I said it in my Power 10 rankings. I, I, I'll say it in my preview article, too. Uh, and we had them on early in the year and we, and we talked about it with them that they they're playing with they weren't they're on a mission right we had them on right after they beat Colorado School of Mines which was a team they lost to, to in the in the super regional uh championship game and they were on a mission to make sure they got back there they got the chance to beat you know possibly play mines beat them and be the team that advances to the semifinals this year and they took care of business in a tough conference. They went out of conference. They played two teams in that are in the playoffs in this part of the region. Uh, they played them really well. They won. And, uh, you know, they're 11 and 0 for a reason. And I think they're, 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 they're the deserving number one seed. And I think they are the team to beat, but that said, Colorado school of mines is still ridiculous, you know? And, and the thing that's great is we had John Matoka on last year when, he had this breakout season and he's even better. Right. And, and we remember, we remember, I remember that the thing that you and I liked about him most was how he was a student of the game, how smart he was about talking football, right. Not just about the X's and O's, but the student of the game. And he took it, you could tell he studied and, and learned the game and is just on a whole nother level than he was last year when we thought he was great. And now he's even better. Um, and I think it's really cool. Minnesota state's back. I think they're really dangerous. It makes it hard for me to root, but of course I got to root for a college named Wayne. I got to say go Wayne all day, you know, but uh, the Mavericks are a tough team to beat. Um, I think this is a really cool part of the bracket. If you look, all the first round games are in, it's NSIC versus NSIC, RMAC versus RMAC, NSIC versus NSIC, right? Um, I think it's a really cool 
uh, way that it came out. I think it's uh, maybe a little bit unfair because there's too much familiarity for the teams that are playing, you know, and they and they know what to expect. But maybe it's an advantage, maybe it's a disadvantage. But um, I think it's cool the way that it came out. Sure. All right. Well, um, did we talk about a sleeper here for Region Four? Who is the sleeper? It's no. Um, it's tough to say. I mean, Winona is really good. Uh, Wayne State, I, Wayne State hasn't been here since 2008. So, you know, why not? Um, Minnesota State has a lot to prove, right? They had that. It's funny, you know, they had a winning season, but it was a bad season for them because they didn't go undefeated. And they didn't make it to the semifinals. And that's what Minnesota State does. So I feel like they're kind of on a mission to say, hey, we're, we're back. But it's kind of cool that they're playing Wayne State first time since 2008, never has never won a playoff game. They that was their only other time here, and then they lost in the first round. And uh, you know, I think that's a cool story. So I think that makes them a cool underdog to root for and, and kind of watch. But I, I, the the sad truth for them is Minnesota State's really really good, and it's going to be a tough, tough game. Pueblo is really good, but I just don't. Um, I don't. I don't think there's maybe three or four teams that could be Colorado School of Mines. In the country, they have two losses, and it's the Angelo State and Grand Valley State, and that's the one and two team <laughs> in the country. You know, like uh, so. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think unfortunately for Pueblo, they just got their hands full. And, and Bemidji State, that offense, you know, remember, I took a lot of heat because I picked them to go to the semifinals last year on the prediction show with the D two football guys, and they did make it out of the first round, but they didn't make it much further. But um, I think they they uh, they may have learned lessons from last year, and I think they get out of the first round. So that, I guess, to me, makes Wayne State kind of the sleeper team to watch. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it from the Dean of D2. Again, <laughs> I appreciate your expertise because I, I don't know these teams quite as much as you, quite in depth, probably not even close. But that's okay because I'm just here to name off the teams. You give the info, and then we're going to see how it goes, and it'll probably be all wrong. <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll meet up in a couple of weeks and talk about how badly how badly we did <laughs> well thank uh, you guys. appreciate it and thanks to everybody for listening today yeah and don't forget we're we'll be back next week with a couple guests and give us a listen give us a follow and we'll see you next week on the d2 nation <laughs>